We're about to investigate how far and wide my nasal secretions may travel if I had a cold. Now, I don't have a cold. We're going to achieve my cold by Jamie giving me a mechanical cold, which is a drip rig that will be strapped to my face and slowly dripping a fluorescing fluid. Jamie has carefully selected a non-toxic fluorescent dye that's invisible to the naked eye, but will glow orange under a black light. To ensure there is no cross-contamination, he first checks the table. Okay, the space is clean, and I don't see any marks on you. I think we're good to go. Then Jamie starts the nasal drip and leaves Adam to some modeling. I'm ready to start constructing. I'll start the timer now. Good luck. Thanks. Remember, they're testing to see if Adam's pseudo-snot will spread far and wide. And after an hour of building, gluing, and wiping, 60 milliliters of fluid has dripped through the nose rig. OK, so time's up. We get to see how far your nasal secretions went. Excellent. All right, let's do it. Da, da, da. Oh, my gosh, look at that. That is, wait, look at my face. That's disgusting. <laughs> Am I like just covered with it? You are. The table, the plane, and Adam are lit up like a dance party with a trail of snot or neon dye on everything Adam has touched. Well, we set out to construct an experiment whereby we could track my nasal secretions, and I have to say, I think we've done stunningly. They seem to have gotten absolutely everywhere. Everything on this table has a little touch of orange on it. <laughs> That's the name of my cover band. Touch of orange. Obviously, Adam's pseudo snot got everywhere, which is amazing given that it was coming out a tiny droplet at a time. But what does this mean as far as transmitting a cold virus or a flu? Well, to find that out, we've got to introduce people. And so that's what we're going to do next. If someone nearby has a runny nose, can they spread their snot to you just by being close? To find out, the Mythbusters are throwing a party. Soon, I will have six guests, or as I like to call them, test subjects, having a party with me under test conditions. These conditions are, three of my guests are gonna behave as germaphobes. Three of my guests have no idea what's happening. I will be spreading my nasal secretions far and wide while performing a series of normal party-like tasks. Cake, toasts, games, what have you. At the end of all of this, we're gonna flick out the lights, turn on the ultraviolet lights, and see how far I've been able to spread my secretions. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get into makeup. So as not to reveal what's being tested to our guest guinea pigs, special effects artist Danny gives Adam a nose job. Oh, it's just a little bit restrictive, but not bad. Hell of a lot better than the Band-Aid. With Adam in the chair, Jamie prepares our three germaphobe guests. Welcome to the party. Thank you. So this is how this is going to work. Adam has a cold, and your job is not to get that cold. You still have to stay here. You can't just leave, but you don't want to catch his cold. All right, sounds good. Gross. <laughs> Carry Grant and Tori will try their germaphobe best not to pick up Adam's nasal secretions. However, the control group, the remaining three guests, will have no idea Adam is even secreting. Hello, Pearl, nice to meet you. Adam just wiped his nose and now he's shaking hands. That stuff's getting everywhere. While Jamie tracks the contamination, Adam's rig will drip at exactly the rate a human nose runs, 60 milliliters an hour. Oh, we're going to have a fun little party here. Are you guys ready? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I've got a little, little bit of a stuffy nose, but this should all be very cool. We're going to have some cake. We're going to have a couple of games and a little, well, not actual champagne, but some bubbly. Remember, the goal is to find out if Adam will pass on his pseudo-secretions to his guests through the normal activity of a party. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for participating in my uh, little science experiment here. Yeah, sport. And just like any host with a runny nose, Adam's using a handkerchief. <laughs> Cake, yes? Yeah. Yeah. You want a big slice or a little slice? But it soon becomes clear that the same hand he uses to wipe his nose is also passing everything to his guests. So we're getting some good contact here. We've got him handling the plates, the forks. Those are being passed over. 
with any luck, each one of those has been marked. Although our trio of germaphobes keep an eye on exactly what Adam's touching, the unprepared guests have no idea what's being passed around. OK, it looks like as he's pouring, he's touching them on the shoulder. So each one of those is a mark. There ain't no party like a Mythbusters party. And although the good times and the dice roll, eventually the fun must come to an end. Thanks again. <laughs> Tori. Celebrating with you. Thank you so much for coming. Really. But of course, our test subjects are still in the dark. And the moment has come for the big snotty reveal. What was going on was that I had a mechanical runny nose, I had a little tube running down the side of my nose, dripping a fluorescing fluid. The goal was to see how far my nasal secretions might travel if I had a cold and who might get those on them. To give you an idea about how much it spread on me alone, normally my skin would not fluoresce under black light. Are you ready? Oh. Oh, yeah. Adam may look like a radioactive clown, but has he spread his radioactive red snot? <laughs> First off, the unknowing guest guinea pigs. Leah, let's see those hands. Hold them up into the light. Oh, yeah. They all bear the telltale signs of contamination. But what about our germaphobe trio? Despite their best efforts, Grant and Tori couldn't escape the neon. Grant, let's see those I hands. I couldn't avoid shaking your hand. Tori? Oh, Tori. You got it. Did we, we got it on your we face sneak here? off somewhere? Tori has even ended up with snot on his face. Carrie, however, is a different story. I have to confess, I'm actually a germaphobe, so this was not too hard for me. And I am not surprised I did this well. Nice. Wow, incredible. So how many of us got colds? I'd say five out of the six of you have been legitimately exposed with only a 30-minute dinner party <laughs> and one typhoid Mary. So even though I knew Adam had a fake cold, I was still kind of grossed out by the idea. So I kind of employed all of my usual techniques not to get sick. I didn't touch anything or anywhere that he touched. Uh, when he handed me something, I wiped it off with my napkin. Practiced hygiene fiend Carrie managed to avoid contact. But for her colleagues, social convention made it a lot harder. He's trying to be this gracious host, and he's filling up my glass. He's handing me pretzels. And I'm trying to be polite and avoid anything that he's touching. But I mean, at a certain point, you can't help it anymore. Right at the very end of dinner, as we were saying our goodbyes, Adam stuck out his hand, and I had to shake it. And you know what? If someone sticks out their hand, you can't avoid shaking it. And that is where he got me. With five out of six guests infected at a dinner table that's more neon than not, where does this leave the myth? It's really impressive to me that viruses have found the one place on the human body not only capable of producing enough fluid, but doing it in such a way that human hands are inclined to mop that fluid up. And then they can spread themselves and propagate really quickly. Look around me. Look at how far and wide my secretions have spread to everywhere on this table. Next time you think you've got an innocuous runny nose, <laughs> think again. <laughs>